welcome to Newman University Church and the Notre Newman Center for Faith and Reason. I'm Father Bill Daly, the director of the center. And it's my pleasure to welcome you here. The least interesting but legally very important thing to say is that should something besides Kevin Whelan and Stephen Ray be on fire tonight, uh, these doors to your right, in addition to the main entrance in which you came, are a fire escape. Uh, but now beyond that, uh, it's our great pleasure to welcome you. I think it's going to be a very scintillating evening, um, both here in, in the name of the church, where we're going to hear a fantastic presentation um, of really interesting and provocative content. And then, uh, as always, we gather in communion uh, in the rear of the church uh, for some uh, beverages and refreshment and continue chance to engage with our author. Um, before I get to our author, I will uh, announce our special guest, who, due to laryngitis, needs an understudy. But the understudy for Stephen Ray tonight is Stephen Ray, because he's that dedicated. Uh, he's been a friend at the center and a friend of uh, Kevin Leland and his wife, Ann Looney who has been uh, able to lend his considerable vocal talents to us on many occasions. Tonight, he has a bit of voice impairment, and hopefully with the microphone, uh, he'll be able to uh, lend some extra grace to the words uh, that Kevin uh, has written for us. Uh, Stephen Ray, as you know, is an Oscar-nominated actor. Um, first came to light to me and to the world in a big way with The Crying Game, back when I was an undergraduate studying in London. So. Uh, Reminds me of uh, my own age. Um, you would have seen him in last year's thrilling gothic horror, Red, which you would have noticed carefully because scenes of it were filmed in this very church. And of course, uh, hopefully, you've got a chance to see Black Horror 7, in which he had a truly moving soliloquy. Uh, but I hope if you haven't seen it, you'll take a chance to see it soon. And so that's the end of We'll be reading from uh, our selections tonight from Kevin Whelan. Kevin Whelan, uh, in addition to being uh, a friend, um, is a very well-known and highly regarded scholar. described in the uh, Atlantic Ocean, uh, and this is from 947, from the Meadows of Gold. There is no way forward for those who enter from the Mediterranean. Nothing moves upon it. There are no inhabited lands there or rational beings. Its extent and where it ends are unknown. No one knows how far it reaches. It is called the Sea of Darkness, the Green Sea, or the Encircling Sea. So I am shrouded out here in the mark and the mist and the mud and the misery sense of pride and urgency. So Colin Bass um, talks about this uh, in the six, late 6th century. We Irish, inhabitants of the world's edge, are disciples of Saints Peter and Paul. Christ, the true Father, the charioteer of Israel, travels over the channel surge, over the dolphin's backs, over the swelling flood and reach even unto us. For lo, the name of the city, which is the King's glory, like something most holy, far removed from heaven's common kind, a city once founded to the great joy of almost all nations, had been published far and wide throughout the whole world, even as far as the western regions of Earth's farther strand, miraculously unhindered. By ocean surging floods, though they leaked and rose beyond measure on every side. So, Kevin Bell there claiming this special role for the Irish that this global message is central to the church that has come in shoes or with the saddles for horses, whatever. Here's his two Irish lads, and uh, he describes what happened. When the pursuit of learning had been almost forgotten throughout all his realm, Two Irishmen came from Ireland to the coast of Gaul along with some British traders. These Irishmen were unrivaled for their skill in sacred and secular learning. And when the crowd pressed around them every day for business, they exhibited no wares but shouted, Hey, anyone who desires wisdom, draw near and get from us. We have wisdom for sale. 
two hours dancing, <laughs> dancing around, and the senior doctrina beat that fellow coming on. Learn now, boys. The age for learning quickly passes. Time flies by as the heavens spin, the days fall. Just as a swift horse gallops eagerly over the course, so youth sails by, alas, without lingering as it passes. The pliant tip of the twig curves easily beneath pressure, but no one can bend the stiff bows. While your minds are still receptive, comrades, waste no time and learn the divine commands of God. Do not squander the time generously granted to you, for without learning, our life perishes. This is the artist, the Bishop of Fisola, in the translation by the great star, Lee Bequer. The noblest share of Earth is the far western world, whose name is written Scotia in the ancient books. Rich in goods, in silver, jewels, cloth and gold, benign to the body in air and mellow soil, with honey and with milk flow islands lovely plains. With silk and arms, abundant fruit with art and men. Worthy are the Irish to well dwell in this their land, a race renowned in war, in peace, in faith. So, my point here is uh, how intellectual they were. These were very gifted in terms of poetry and talent, and some hard taste. But uh, in the Irish, it says, and Stephen would then read in English. A dear God, a dear God, what through pill I was fallen on, what crawl will she on to the girl with being a glory, a sheep in law, my dear God. Little Derry, little Derry, my hazelnut and my jewel, it is my affliction that fate has decreed that Protestants will be living in the heart of my little Derry. And this is the period when famously the same Christ was on the head of a priest as a wolf, a the of the penal days. And this is the idea of this of being voiced by a priest who is on the run and who is fearful of being captured. A cuckoo doesn't call from the branch, nor a seagull from the valley. I don't think it's an insect or a shadow, but I do not think it's a host of the farmers. When I hear the sounds of my feet, or slack a bush behind me, I think it is the chase bearing down on me here, there, everywhere. So now the Catholics again find themselves in so when he saw a red-faced Irish nun over me. I can never be a Catholic because I'm such a snob. But the Irish, the battle-hardened Irish Catholics, uh, found ways of evading this and of clinging uh, strongly to their own faith. And this talk is about the relationship between the perception of the Irish and the reality. Rick, heavy horse boys, kerns, gallow glasses, cows, bars, captains, robberies, they're foreign women folk. Swords, dice, whisper, chess, harps, word horns, bows and arrows, all are hid within the foldings of their Irish cloak. Fit house for an outlaw, meat bed for a rebel. This whore's wardrobe is convenient for a thief, and when it freezes, it becomes his tabernacle. A new snow he finds Hibernian relief. Then there is the big, thick bush of hair hanging down over their eyes. Again, they call it in their state. They do not recognize the power of the crown. At the drop of a hat, they are wont to vanish into deep, dark woods. Forever in the make, they drink and talk too much. Not all of it is gibberish. So it's a, it's a remarkable uh, poem in a way because it captures the sense of difference but also the sense that something in there might be.